Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 12 best ornamental trees for any size space. I wanted to specifically focus on this as many gardens have been focusing on smaller plants lately and ornamental trees are a huge part of garden design and sometimes you just don't have space for that really large plant. Um, I have another video that I did a few months ago on 12 different compact conifers. So this is going to be pretty much all deciduous stuff, I think except for one. So if you're interested in more conifer stuff, um, I will link that video down below or I think there'll be a card up at the top as well. Um, but besides that, let's just jump right in. I'm going to be doing three different categories with kind of like a little bonus category. The first one is going to be tall trees that are 15 or more feet tall. Uh, second is going to be medium, which is 10 to 15 feet tall. And then the last category is going to be small, which is anything less than 10 feet, which in the realm of trees, they're all pretty small. So that's why I consider these all ornamental. Okay, so the first one on our list is the Jade Butterfly Ginkgo. This grows 12 to 15 feet tall and up to 10 feet wide. It's very slow growing. It might get a little larger than that over time, but it's going to take a while to get to that size. Hardy in zones 4 through 9 and wants full sun. Some great features about this plant, um, it's vase shaped and has a densely branched habit, so it's gonna be very full looking. And it's a fruitless male. If you've ever grown ginkgos or know the whole story with them, you don't really want the females and the fruit because those can be pretty smelly. Uh, so this is a male, it's not gonna produce any fruit whatsoever. Another thing that's interesting is the distinctly shaped leaves are definitely something to look at. Um, they have dichotomous leaves and there's no other trees that really look like the ginkgo. And then last thing is it has bright yellow foliage in the fall. Absolutely stunning fall foliage. Um, definitely something to look forward to if you do get one of these trees in the ground. Definitely a plant I'd recommend. All right, next up is the Vasi Golden Chain Tree. This one is the largest on our list. It does get a little big, but I did want to include it. It gets 20 feet tall and 15 feet wide. It's hardy in zones six through eight, so kind of a narrow space hardy-wise. Um, and then it wants full sun, maybe a little bit of partial sun in like that zone eight. Uh, some great features is that it has long drooping clusters of bright yellow flowers, and it does bloom in the spring. Long, long flowers. They're really gorgeous, especially when they blow in the wind. Um, it's a highly fragrant tree as well. So if you want some fragrance in your yard, this is a great tree. And the foliage is actually a bluish green color, so a little bit different than some of the others. Okay, so that was everything in our tall category. Medium is going to be our largest category with four different plants. And starting off this group is the Baby Grand Magnolia. This grows only 8 to 10 feet tall and wide. It's hardy in zones 7 through 9, and this wants full sun. Some great features about this plant is that it blooms in the spring and the summer, so you get a decent amount of time for it to bloom. Um, and you can use it as a single plant or in hedges if you want a nice green hedge with some white flowers. Um, and the large flowers are actually lemon scented, so it's great to just walk up to and smell one of those flowers. And this magnolia is an evergreen. It's basically a smaller version of the southern magnolia. All right, next up on our list is Royal Star Magnolia. Now, I did choose two types of magnolias for this list, but the rest of them are not repeats. And I only chose this because the other magnolia is not hardy in very cold climates. This one is hardy down to zone four. So this one grows 10 to 15 feet tall, 10 to 12 feet wide, so still not too big. Um, it's hardy in zones four through nine, and it does want full sun. Some great features is that it has enormous double white flowers in early to mid spring. It has great cold and heat tolerance for a magnolia. And it is deciduous, so that's the thing about this magnolia, it's not an evergreen, this one is deciduous. Um, but it does have very large buds throughout the winter, so you do get a lot of character with this tree even in the winter time before these buds open up. Uh, so you do get a beautiful tree really for all four seasons. Next up is the Double Dynamite Crepe Myrtle. This one grows about 8 to 10 feet tall and 8 to 12 feet wide. I want to mention something about that size at the end, um, but it is hardy in zones 7 through 10, so more of a warmer climate. Um, and this one wants full sun. Some great features is that it is long blooming from early to late summer, so a long portion of the summer that it's going to bloom. It has deep foliage that contrasts well from many other plants. It's a very deep purple color, uh, similar to like a nine bark, so very beautiful, definitely will stand out. It does have sterile flower clusters that emerge bright pink, and then they actually age to an intense cherry red, so they change quite a bit over their time. Um, and the reason I mentioned the size of it is that pruning correctly can help this tree stay to more of a tree shape. If you don't prune this at all, it's going to be more of just like a really large, really wide shrub. But if you do prune that as it's growing up and have the bottom of it as just more like thick branches and then have it go up to more of a vase shape, then you really can train this to be more of a tree. And that is the case for a couple other of these plants as well. Okay, next up is the Rising Sun Redbud. This is a pretty cool plant. 
grows 8 to 12 feet tall, 12 to 15 feet wide, so a little bit wider than it is tall for sure. Hardy in zones 5 through 9, and then this wants full sun or partial sun. If it ever says partial sun for any of these plants, that's more in the warmer climates. If you're in like a zone 6 or colder, um, and it is hardy to that zone, you want to put it in full sun, as much sun as it can possibly get. Some great features about this plant is that it opens up many bright pink flowers in the spring all over the branches. Red buds are really a sight to see when they bloom. And the beautiful foliage starts with apricot that ages to a vivid gold and then eventually to a bright green. So the leaves themselves actually can be three different colors at the same time on this tree. It's really awesome, especially when you see the pictures of these plants. Um, and then what's also great about this is that it has very bold and large leaves that are actually heart-shaped uh, that really make a statement. A lot of other trees have much smaller, thinner leaves that have kind of a finer texture. This is very bold and tough. So red buds are really beautiful if you want some bolder texture in your garden. All right, and then last for our medium category is something that you wouldn't really think of, but a pink chiffon rose of Sharon. So this grows 8 to 12 feet tall and 4 to 6 feet wide. Uh, it's hardy in zones 5 through 9 and is definitely going to want full sun. Rose of Sharon's, you want to give them as much sun as possible. Now, the reason I put this on the list is actually due to the garden center that I work at. So these plants are mostly found as shrubs. However, there are tree forms that exist. There's another plant on this list that you'll find that is similar to it. Um, and I didn't know this until I think two years ago when we started carrying it, um, but they do make this where you have a tree trunk at the bottom and then the plant is grafted on top and it does make for a stunning ornamental tree. Uh, what's great about this plant is that it is long blooming but it's also heat tolerant and salt tolerant. So if you want an ornamental tree where you get a lot of snow and they put a lot of salt on the road and you have it by the road, this is a great plant for that. And if you have a lot of pavement around this tree uh, or just some sort of hardscaping, it's great for having it in a really hot spot. And as many gardeners that have planted Rose of Sharon's in the past, they might be a bit wary about this plant, but the double blooms mean that there's actually little to no seed set on these. So you don't need to worry about this making a billion other plants after a couple of years. It's pretty much sterile. Next up is our small category, which only has two plants on this list. Uh, but first up is the Kilmarnock Willow. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it is a weeping pussy willow. This one grows about eight feet tall and six feet wide, hardy in zones four through eight, and this one wants full sun. Some features about this plant are that the beautiful weeping habit provides a stunning structure year round. Even when it doesn't have anything on it, just the structure of those falling branches definitely looks beautiful. Um, the catkins open to fuzzy flower buds that are actually great for a cut flower. So if you're looking for something probably around February to use in a cut flower arrangement or just something else that's pretty in your garden in February, this is going to be a showstopper for sure. And what's great about this is it actually can be used as an alternative to weeping willows that have a similar effect. It's not going to look exactly the same, but if you have like a small koi fish pond or somewhere where you want like a weeping willow, or if you happen to have a septic tank in your yard and you're worried about uh, roots from a weeping willow, this is a great small alternative, especially if you are confined for space. And the next plant is the Little Lime Panicle Hydrangea. Now this plant gets three to five feet tall and three to five feet wide. This is a type of panicle hydrangea that would also be grafted on top of a trunk, just like that pink chiffon rose of Sharon. So when I say the three to five feet tall and wide, that's only the top portion of the plant. The plant is gonna be raised up on maybe a two, three, four foot stem, but you're gonna see three to five feet from the base of where that plant is grafted onto that trunk. This plant is hardy in zones three through eight and wants full sun to partial shade. If you're in a zone seven or eight, you might wanna give it partial shade. Any other zone that's colder than those, you wanna give it full sun. Now you may have heard of the limelight hydrangea or seen a lot of them around in other people's landscapes or might have it in your own landscape, but there's a reason I chose the little lime over the limelight hydrangea. What's great about this plant is that it is an overall better hydrangea tree from other varieties like limelight and phantom. It blooms earlier than other panicle varieties, so a limelight hydrangea standard might bloom a little bit later than this one, so you'll have a show for a little bit longer. And the strong stems do keep this bloom from drooping. I've seen a lot of phantom variety hydrangeas where the stems just kind of flop over. This one's going to hold them up straight a lot better. Colder nights in the fall are going to bring pink and burgundy tones to these flowers, and they seem to have a little bit better tones than some of these other flowers in terms of having those deeper pinks and then eventually burgundy. And the flowers do still look really pretty on this plant in the winter, so you kind of get a good three seasons of interest out of this plant. If you're in a really windy climate, you might want to prune this back like I do with my hydrangeas, but if you don't get a ton of wind in the winter or any heavy, heavy snow, then you can keep those blooms on until late winter, early spring. Okay, so we are on to my top three picks. 
The reason I did this little section is because out of all the plants that I chose, these I believe are the top three performing plants and they really do provide four full seasons of interest. So if you want the best bang for your buck with the tree, the tree that's gonna stand out the absolute most in your garden, these would be the top three to look for. First up is the Sweet Sugar Thyme Crab Apple. This grows only about 10 feet tall and wide. It's hardy in zones four through eight and it's gonna want full sun and it also mentioned that it does best in acidic well draining soil. So if you have a really alkaline soil, maybe this isn't the best plant for you. Some great features about this plant, I really love this tree, is that the flowers will open white in the spring on a dense and compact form tree. So it's gonna be very full looking, completely covered in flowers. In the summer, after the leaves have developed, the berries on this crab apple will already start to form and turn red. In the fall, the berries really start to stand out, especially because they have those longer stems. They're a little bit longer than regular crab apples. And what's most interesting about this plant is that it has an unusual ability to hold on to bright red berries through the fall, sometimes into winter, and even the next spring, which is crazy. And the best thing about these berries is that they actually stay intact on the tree without shriveling. So a lot of crab apples you might see after a month or two of those berries being on there, they start to shrivel up and look like they're almost dehydrated. These will stay plump and bright red all throughout the fall. And then as long as the birds don't get to them, they will stay on the tree until winter and even into the spring. But what's awesome still even if you don't have the berries on there for too long is they do provide a lot of food for the birds all right next up is the coral bark Japanese maple now this is one I actually have in my garden uh, I planted it last fall it grows 15 to 25 feet tall and 15 to 20 feet wide so this is probably a pretty big plant in terms of ornamentals but if you have the space it is well worth it it's hardy in zones five through eight and can grow in full sun, partial sun, or filtered sun. Again, the filtered sun is gonna be more warmer climates. If you're in a zone six or colder, you're gonna want it in full sun. Some great features about this plant is that it has lime green leaves with red margins that emerge in the springtime. So a little bit more of like a chartreuse color than a lot of the other greens you'll see from other trees. And then it has bright color for the summertime. It's definitely gonna stand out and has beautiful high quality foliage. Then in the fall, the leaves turn to a vibrant golden yellow for a real showstopper. I mean, I can tell you when I got this tree, it was in its full fall foliage. This thing really stands out compared to a lot of other trees. I also say, I will say from my own personal experience, this tree holds on to its leaves for quite a while. So you get that show for a long time. And the best thing about this plant is the gorgeous, brilliant red bark that stands out and actually intensifies in the winter. If you have something in the background that you can really see the red pop against, if you have some sort of an evergreen or something, then this is going to be a great plant to get because that red bark is beautiful. All right, and we are on the last plant for this list. This is actually another plant that I started growing this past year. This is called the Temple of Bloom Seven Sunflower. It grows about six to 10 feet tall and wide, hardy in zones five through nine, and wants full sun. What's great about this plant is that in the spring, it reveals large, glossy, again, high quality foliage. It is really beautiful foliage, something you just want to walk up to and take a look at. In the summer, you'll have clusters of white flowers at the ends of each branch that actually end up attracting a lot of hummingbirds. These are really pretty. They're, they're kind of inconspicuous flowers, um, but when you have clusters of them, they do start to stand out quite a bit. And then in the fall, you'll have pink and red clusters of the bracts from these flowers that are left over, which actually create a second show of color. It almost looks like this tree is reblooming again with pink flowers, but when you get close up to it, they're actually not flowers, they're just the bracts. And a bract is basically like what the flower is being held on by. And the best way of thinking about that is like a poinsettia. So those poinsettia flowers that you would think are flowers are actually just the bracts and they look like leaves. So this is really pretty. And then what's also awesome about this plant is that the winter brings peeling bark on those branches to stand out. So it is deciduous, it loses its leaves, but even in the winter time, you really start to look at that bark. It's like a cinnamony color and it peels back and it's really gorgeous to see when everything else is just kind of dormant for that winter. Okay, so we have made it to the end of our list. Um, I will link all of these plants down below if you want to read up more on them. And I, like I said, I did make that other video structured just like this one is um, with compact conifers if you want to check out some more evergreen stuff. Um, besides that, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up for me so I can see that you guys want to see more stuff like this. Um, besides that, I will see you guys in the next video.